What's up everybody, this is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today we are going to talk about pickup design in just a minute, but there's a couple things I want to tell you first. It is July 12th, 2021, as this video is coming out. It's Monday. Um, it is Summer Nam Week, and we are in Nashville, Tennessee. And the place that I have is a little loud, so we're going to shoot the rest of this video inside, but I just wanted to tell you, uh, we are in Nashville, Tennessee. And if you have anything you want to see at Nam, let me know. There will not be a Thursday night live stream. I think what we're going, because I have a bunch of engagements having to do with NAM, and I'm not going to be able to do the Thursday night live stream. So I think what we're going to do is probably do it on Saturday morning at some point. Um, I will put a thumbnail up ahead of time with the time and everything, but I think it's going to be Saturday morning, like 9 o'clock Eastern time or something. I'm not really sure. We'll have to figure it out. It might be 10. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. But we'll post that later this week. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about pickup design. Okay, so this, how do you design a pickup, is probably one of the most asked questions in the comments of our YouTube videos and in emails and all kinds of specific stuff like magnets and wire and how do you determine what that means, um, what one you're going to use, how it's going to sound, where do you even start with all of this stuff. So since I've been doing a bunch of prototyping on the top secret project lately I was thinking this would be a good time to do this because it's really fresh in my mind there's two types of in my this for, for me anyway there's two ways to go about designing a pickup the first one would be uh, to literally design it completely from scratch and you're like coming up with a new shape and you're either 3d printing or laser cutting bobbins and stuff like that and really coming up with something completely out out of the ordinary but most of the time that doesn't happen because people want stuff that fits in the normal formats of their guitars. For the most part, we use existing magnet formats and bobbin formats and etc. because you want it to fit into your guitar and you want it to fit into a lot of guitars. So most of that stuff has been standardized. So today we're gonna use a single coil, like a Strat style bobbin as an example as a coil of all of the things that you're going to have to measure and look at to quote unquote design a pickup so let's look at that first i actually shot this the other day look at that first and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what we're actually going to change or what we could change okay so the first thing we're going to do we're, we've got a stratocaster coil here that we're going to use for purposes let's pretend this was this is this is a dud but let's pretend this was a pickup that I was using and I wanted to copy everything about it and understand what its design was and then carry that on into a new design. Okay, so basically what we would do, the very first thing we would do is take this coil and we would measure it. We just measure the resistance, okay? So we'd measure the resistance and then I have an iPad. Um, I'm not gonna show you what's in here because there's all kinds of top secret stuff in here, but basically, I have an iPad Pro and I write down everything that we're gonna write down. We document everything. So um, we document the resistance of the pickup and then we have this other meter that we use to measure the, re not the resistance, but the capacitance of the pickup. So the capacitance in my experience has had a lot to do with the amount of clarity uh, and definition, note definition that the pickup has. So the higher the capacitance, um, the less of that. And in my experience, the less expressive it is, okay? So um, we want it to be a really nice expressive pickup, really touch sensitive. Uh, we want it to really react to your fingers when you dig into the pickup, when you let go of it, um, all, all those sorts of things. We're not talking about output, but we're kind of talking about the expression, in my opinion, that's what I call it, of the pickup. So that's capacitance. So we want that to be, I have a, a target number. Now I don't publish any of these numbers. These are part of the thing that we do. And so I don't publish the actual numbers, but 
I have goals for those, those numbers. So those capacitance numbers are there. And then the next thing we would do is we would come over here and measure the, the, the Henry's, the millihenries of the pickup. So like for, uh, which is the inductance. Um, the easiest way to understand what inductance does in a pickup is it's basically, uh, so the long and the short of it is, it's the efficiency of the coil to do its work when it's working. Um, that's the easiest kind of most elementary way to explain it. And so that, it to me, measures the true performance uh, of the pickup, not the resistance. The resistance just gives us an idea how much wire is on the coil. The inductance gives us an idea um, of the overall efficiency of the, the, the pickup, what it's going to do. Uh, and of course, that has a lot to do, um, there's some factors that, that play into that. The magnets, once they're magnetized to strength, and if there is a plate on the bottom, like if it was a Telecaster pickup, for example, that would all play into it as well. So that number would change. When you put a plate on the bottom of a Telecaster pickup, that changes the amount of inductance that that pickup has. It actually raises it. So we have to have a fully assembled, fully magnetized, ready to go pickup to measure all these things. You can't just measure the bare inductance of a coil because it does all matter. So we've got our resistance, we've got our inductance, we've got our capacitance. Uh, now the next thing we need to do is I want to measure with a caliper this is probably one of the most important in my mind, the actual physical dimension of the coil. So the height of the coil, how long it is, and how wide it is, and we'll get to that in a minute, uh, is gonna have more to do with the sound of this pickup than quibbling over materials and such. You know, a lot of people will say, well, it has to be this particular wire coating and it has to be this particular. Okay, it does for certain reasons that we'll get to in a minute. But let's talk about the physical measurements of the pickup first. So one of the things I will do is I will measure the entire height of the, I'll measure the, just the height of the coil. We also have to measure the thickness of the flat work itself. And we'll get to why in a minute, okay? So we measure the thickness of the bottom flat work. We measure the thickness without damaging the coil of the top of the flat work. We document all of this. Usually it's 93 thousandths and 62 thousandths, but sometimes because of manufacturing differences, we, we measure that. And the reason we have to measure that is because we also want to measure and document for each string. So this is a staggered coil. We need to measure the height of each magnet. Now the problem is, is that if it's not stamped in here correctly, you can be off by a couple of thousands. Fortunately, magnets for single coils come in predetermined lengths usually. So uh, 0.630 inches, 0.650 inches, 0.688 inches, 0.71 inches, etc. So we measure the height of each one of these, okay? And they may be different on a staggered, staggered pickup. Each one might be a little different, okay? And then we also look at the amount of beveling on the top of each magnet. Understand that, okay? And what I need to understand here is the, the relationship between the height of the entire magnet, the height of the coil itself, the thickness of the flat work, so that we understand what the coil dimension versus the height of the magnet is. Um, because then when you put a cover on it, that affects how it all fits together. We wanna make sure all those numbers work. So. All of these numbers have to be written down. Every measurement, the thickness of the bottom, the thickness of the top, the height of the coil, the width of the coil, the width of the inside of the coil. So right like so, okay? The diameter of each magnet. So usually on a single coil, it's either 187 or 195. These are 187s. So, that has to be measured, okay? So all the physical measurements of the pickup have to be taken. Um, now, uh, the next thing we need to do is we'll set all of that aside. After we've written all this down and documented every number, then we come over here to a gauss meter. Gauss meter, tesla meter, whatever you want to call it. And we measure the strength of each magnet. Oh, I never magnetized these because this was a dud prototype but basically we would measure the magnetism of each magnet 
what's interesting about this is not only does the that tell me what gauge I can look at the the numbers on this meter and tell if it's an Alnico 3 or an Alnico 5 because you can't tell that by looking at it. Is it an Alnico 2, Alnico 3, Alnico 5? Those typically have different gauge ranges that they can that they can work in or that they can be magnetized to. So the number on a pickup, so Alnico 3 versus Alnico 5, the maximum magnetic strength that can be achieved with a 5 is higher than it is with a 3. So I can actually come in here and provided these magnets have been magnetized to full strength, then I can tell if it's an Alnico 3 or an Alnico 5. Now you might ask, what if it's a 50, 60 year old pickup? There is a lot of misconception about this, but in my experience, they don't fade off as much as you might think they would fade off. That being said, you have to document that and decide in your next design whether you're going to go all the way up to full strength past what those ones were, it all matters. So documenting the magnetic strength of each pull piece. The thing is, is that not only does the magnetic strength by grade matter, but a taller magnet is gonna be stronger than a shorter magnet. So understanding all that, documenting all of that, and kind of figuring out what all of that means. So now we've documented the physical size of the coil, we've documented the physical size of everything, we've documented all the electrical measurements, we've documented the uh, magnetic gauss. So now let's talk about actually designing a, something new. What are we gonna change? What are we gonna copy? What are we gonna do? And how are we gonna figure it out? Crazy, right? It's a bunch of details. Um, it's just a lot of measuring and a lot of documenting. So then the next step would be to decide what the goal for the new pickup is gonna be. Most of the time, you're starting with something that's already been made and then you're making changes from there or you're trying to clone but then maybe refigure a few things and so that's gonna come into play so do we want the thing to sound more stratty or less stratty do we want the thing to have a ton of pick a pick attack then we want probably to go with a stronger magnet do we want it to sound have more highs and more clarity we want to make sure we lower our capacitance uh, do we want the thing to have what wire are we going to use? Because there's a bunch of different wire choices now. You know, there used to be like two. There used to be heavy form var and plain enamel. Well, now there's a bunch of stuff. Now there's single build poly, double build poly, heavy form var, plain enamel in a couple of different thicknesses. There are also some other wire coatings that are higher capacitance, which I've actually used on purpose in the past, which sounds kind of weird, but I've done it before. What I look at more than anything is the magnet dimensions because a bigger magnet will be stronger even if it's magnetized to the same level you could say as a shorter one so that means that making the pickup taller is going to make it sound different in a bunch of different ways especially if it's a single coil because it's all interactive humbuckers um, and p90s are a little bit easier because some of those dimensions are set so like the dimension of the bobbin, the placement of the magnets, all that stuff is kind of set if it's going to sit in the same hole. And really all you're doing is winding it differently. Different wind counts, different wire, that kind of stuff. But to me, the variables are a little easier. Single coils where every piece of the thing can be varied and moved slightly, whether that's by manufacturing tolerances or by choice. Like we want to make the pickup a little taller, a little shorter, a little fatter, a little wider. Um, when we wind it, we can really, on a single coil, you can really actually vary the shape of the coil when you put it on the white, on the bobbin. And then when you actually wind it, how close did you get? Was your wire tension okay? Was your, was your placement of the wire okay? Was your winds per layer? So like every time you move back and forth, the amount of scatter, all that stuff, that all matters. It's like everything is a variable. So then you make one, and then you make another one and hopefully the other one the second one and the third one and the fifth one and the hundredth one are all the same or relatively similar as the first one you made now hand winding pickups everything's going to be a little different they're all they're always going to be a tiny tiny bit different but you want to be consistent enough to be 
consistent across your brand, right? Like you want to have these, like we have in, in at Dylan Talks Tone, we have a, a few variables that I'm very concerned with. I want it to be have good clarity on top. I want it to have good note definition and touch sensitivity. That is like across my entire brand, every pickup we make. So I want to make sure that those things are present in that pickup because that's part of what we do. That's like what I'm really proud of. So I want to make sure that they do that. If it doesn't do that, we got to go back and figure out why. So sometimes you get it right by accident on the first try. Other times it's literally taking every one of those measurements I showed you again and then going, okay, what did we change? Why don't we like it? What if we change these two variables, these two sizes, these this strength, whatever? These, and then you don't change too much stuff at once. So you gotta change a couple things. It's like tuning a hot rod. If you tune everything, you tune it to a standstill and you and you screw it up. So you gotta do one thing at a time. So you end up doing pickups five, six, seven times over again, like and putting them in the guitar. This is a lot of work. Designing stuff is really fun, but it's a lot of work and it's a lot of measurements. It's less playing and more literally like doing research. And a lot of times researching other pickups, researching other materials you haven't used to reach a certain goal, all those sorts of things. The thing about what we do is I'm not afraid to use anything. We don't stick to this is how it has to be since 19 whatever we use whatever we can to get the goal i don't care that's why dylan talks tone um our kind of our slogan is the new vintage because we want to get those sounds but i don't care how i get them i don't as long as they're the sounds we want it doesn't matter if it sounds good i don't care how i got there and we will use revolutionary new stuff or maybe we'll use the same old stuff. I don't know. Uh, hopefully you dug that kind of like super nerdy uh, diving into how we design pickups, at least around here. It works for us. It's worked for a, a bunch of years. That's how, how we do it. And so I just wanted to share that with you. I know that somebody else is gonna make a video and say they do it completely differently, but I kind of have this process that has worked for us very well. So I uh, hope you dig it. Make sure you check out our other videos. Um, Again, at the beginning of this video, we said that this week was NAM 2021, Summer NAM. We will not have our live stream on Thursday. We'll probably have it on Saturday, I think. I will post all about that. Uh, we got a couple of new shirts in the merch store on Dylan Talks Tone. Make sure you check those out. That's all I got. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the little bell and do all the things. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you, I guess, tomorrow for the news.